In popular imagination, the prehistoric world is often portrayed as a landscape dominated by mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and towering predators at every turn. This image is visually striking, but it represents only a fraction of the reality faced by early humans living during the last ice age. As groups of Homo sapiens moved through cold grasslands and dense valleys, the true threat was constant scarcity. Hunger, territorial predators, and unpredictable weather shaped every decision. In this environment, survival depended less on strength and more on the ability to anticipate danger and outthink the animals sharing the landscape. During this period, early humans began relying on strategies that extended their physical capabilities. Traps, controlled ambushes, and simple engineered devices became essential tools, allowing small groups to secure food and avoid direct confrontation with larger animals. These innovations marked a turning point in human adaptation. As our story moves deeper into the Ice Age landscape, the presence of large predators becomes impossible to ignore. Among them, Smilodon Fatalis stood out as one of the most formidable. This saber-toothed cat relied on ambush rather than pursuit, using dense vegetation or low terrain to approach undetected. Its powerful forelimbs enabled it to pin large prey while its elongated canines delivered precise, fatal bites to vulnerable areas. For early humans, encountering such an animal required immediate caution and a clear escape plan. At the same time, other predators operated with very different strategies. Giant hyenas and the early forms of primitive lions hunted cooperatively, using group coordination to corner large herbivores on open ground. Their territories could stretch across river valleys and steppe regions, forcing human bands to recognize scent marks, tracks, and carcass remains to avoid entering active hunting zones. These carnivores relied on endurance and numbers, posing a persistent risk to small human groups traveling through shared terrain. During this same period, humans also faced threats from animals that were not primarily predators, but were equally dangerous. Cave bears, along with other large herbivores such as bison or woolly rhinoceroses, could become highly aggressive when surprised or defending resources. Encounters in confined areas, especially near caves used for shelter, often forced humans to retreat immediately to avoid fatal injuries. These interactions reinforced the need for awareness and distance when moving through contested landscapes. As a result of living among these powerful species, humans recognized their own physical limitations. With smaller frames, less natural weaponry, and limited speed, direct confrontation was rarely an option. This reality pushed human groups toward innovation, encouraging the development of tools, traps, and coordinated strategies that allowed them to survive, despite the overwhelming advantages held by the animals around them. As human groups continued adapting to the challenges of the late Ice Age, their greatest turning point emerged from within. Cognitive evolution produced a gradual expansion in brain capacity, allowing early Homo sapiens to plan beyond immediate needs. They began anticipating seasonal changes, 
coordinating movements between families and preparing for hunts days or even weeks in advance. This ability to think ahead created a new advantage that no other species possessed. During this same period, communication became a crucial tool. Early humans used gestures, shared signals, and forms of proto-language to synchronize their actions. These exchanges allowed groups to coordinate silent approaches, encircle animals, and react quickly to unexpected movements. Cooperation shifted from simple group presence to deliberate teamwork, strengthening the efficiency of every hunt and every defensive action. As cognitive and social abilities advanced, early technologies became increasingly important. Napped stones provided sharp cutting edges, wooden spears extended reach, and controlled fire allowed humans to manipulate nighttime environments and protect campsites. Although simple by modern standards, these tools marked the first stage of engineered solutions to the dangers of their world. As these mental and technological advancements accumulated, humans began developing primitive traps that transformed their relationship with large animals. One of the earliest and most effective was the pit trap. Hunters disguised deep holes with branches and soil, creating a surface that appeared stable. When a predator or large herbivore stepped onto it, the covering collapsed sending the animal into a confined space where it could no longer charge or escape. Some pits included sharpened wooden stakes to immobilize the trapped creature more quickly. At the same time, humans used natural terrain to their advantage. Cliff-edge traps relied on coordinated drives in which groups guided animals towards steep drop-offs. By using noise, movement and fire, they pushed herds or individual predators into positions where retreat was impossible. The fall itself delivered the fatal blow, eliminating the need for physical confrontation and reducing risk to the hunters. During this period, natural enclosures also became essential tools. Humans identified narrow canyons, rocky corridors, and enclosed basins that could function as temporary corrals. By directing animals with controlled fire and coordinated movement, they drove them into these confined areas where escape routes were limited. Once contained, the animals could be managed with far greater safety demonstrating how early humans turned the landscape itself into a strategic asset. As human strategies matured, the ambush became one of their most effective techniques. Small groups of five to ten individuals operated with clearly defined roles, including spotters, drivers and attackers. Each member relied on visual cues or short acoustic signals to coordinate movement without alerting nearby animals. This structured cooperation allowed humans to act with precision despite having limited numbers. During this same period, knowledge of wind patterns and vegetation density became essential. By approaching from downwind, Humans prevented animals from detecting their scent, and by using shrubs or tall grasses as cover, they reduced their visibility. These practices minimized the chances of premature detection and increased the success of coordinated attacks across open plains and forest edges. As humans refined their ambush techniques, their weapons also evolved. Early bows provided a silent, ranged option for targeting animals before close contact occurred. Throwing spears became more effective with the introduction of the atlatl, 
a simple lever that increased force and accuracy. This tool allowed hunters to deliver penetrating strikes from safe distances, enhancing their ability to face large predators without exposing themselves to direct danger. As these methods became established, some encounters against large animals gained lasting significance. In confrontations with Smilodon, humans relied on combined tactics. Pit traps slowed or immobilized the predator, while spears were used from elevated positions to avoid its powerful forelimbs. This approach reduced risk and demonstrated how humans compensated for their physical disadvantages through planning. When facing giant hyenas, humans depended on tools that disrupted group cohesion. Torches, dense smoke, and loud noises forced the hyenas to break formation, reducing the effectiveness of their coordinated attacks. Once separated, individual animals were easier to deter or drive away, allowing human bands to protect carcasses, resources, or campsites. Encounters with cave bears required a different approach. Humans waited until these animals abandoned seasonal shelters, then used the empty space to establish controlled ambushes. By positioning fire at tunnel entrances and using elevated interior platforms, they limited the bear's movement and reduced the chance of a direct charge. This strategy relied on timing and spatial control rather than brute force. Against prehistoric wolves, humans emphasized defensive structures. Elevated shelters, such as rock outcrops or platforms made from wood and stone, provided a vantage point that wolves could not easily reach. Defensive lines of sharpened stakes discouraged close approaches, forcing the animals to stay at a distance. These preparations allowed human groups to maintain safety during nights, migrations, and harsh winters. As this journey through the prehistoric world comes to an end, one conclusion becomes clear. Human survival was never defined by physical strength. Across harsh climates and against powerful predators, it was planning, cooperation, and innovation that allowed early Homo sapiens to persist where many other species could not. In this environment, the mind became the decisive instrument. Throughout this era, every tool, every trap, and every coordinated effort reflected a single principle. Intelligence reshaped the relationship between humans and their world. The mind became the tool that redefined the destiny of the species marking the beginning of a path that would continue far beyond the Ice Age.